So hello, welcome everyone. Today we are going to be studying one chapter of the book Empty Lives by Joana de Angelis, uh, a psychographic uh, by Divaldo, automatic writing by Divaldo uh, Pereira Franco. And we are going to be uh, analyzing today item three of the book. It's a very important book, I think, for also from the literature of Joana de Angelis. And, um, and so this is the reason why we brought it today. But before we start, as we can see behind me, time for renewal, healing and regrowth, November 5th, 2022. It's going to be at Rice University, Houston, Texas, in person and also a virtual. We will be uh, broadcasting it uh, live for all those who cannot attend in person and, um, and want to uh, follow our program. It's always very, all the, uh, the program is entirely in English. It's, uh, we have very nice things. Uh, in the schedule and if you are listening to this, this transition <laughs> transmission you know uh watching this uh after the november 5th you can go to the united states spiritist federation youtube channel and watch there because it will always also be uh, there in our playlist so let me share with you chapter three on the screen we are going to be reading it and then we are going to comment counting on the participation and co cooperation of you all um the triumph of immortality due to its very structure the spirit's festive and warm physical journey is the consequence of successive transformations that operate throughout its existential trajectory. Obeying the laws of motion, atoms, and particle, particles alter their constitution according to the nature of the whole. In the case of the human organization, atoms and their particles come together in a perfect perispiritual integration that enables it to present itself in recognizable form, which changes according to the energies emitted by the spirit in its evolutionary process. For that reason, the physical body undergoes continuous modifications arising from the vibra vibratory fields programmed for its physical journey. Consequently, everything in the relativity of time and space imposes structural changes that culminate in the biological phenomenon of death, a challenging philosophical enigma death has been each life's great unknown. So let us translate that. <laughs> uh, Joana de Angelis starts this uh, chapter, a chapter that she's be going to be, uh, of course, talking about immortality, the triumph of immortality. First, by giving us the idea <coughs> how our physical bodies are um, putting to place, so to see. So talking about the elements that compose our physical body, but in a way they are guided by our already known perispirit. So the perispirit that brings the reflection of our spirit will be the, the one molding the future body according to its needs, according to how, to its 
current condition, meaning the condition of the spirit and perispirit. But it is also programmed, uh, uh, there is also, a, 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 you know, this pr program that according to how time passes, the level of energy, vi vitality that feeds, you know, all those uh, atoms and particles, all our cells, will no longer be able to receive uh, the amount to maintain the same vitality that we will have in the first years of our existence. And this is the reason why, physically speaking, in terms of our uh, physical body, it is going to start uh, deteriorating according to time. So, which will lead this process of decay to the physical death of the body. And here is where, where she says that death is a philosophical enigma because uh, to many people is still the great unknown. Okay, so uh, I'll stop now and see if you have any comments or questions so far. Hi, Eleanor. Okay, let's go a little more. While some schools of thought confirm the continuation of life, others avert, uh, 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 others uh, say that death is the end. Worth thinkers throughout history have sought to confirm the fact that the being, its thinking energy survives molecular disaggregation, whereas the presumption of innumerable other things has been that because of the suffering and disenchantment they have experienced, death must be the final point. Between both behavioral currents, mediumistic phenomena under various names demonstrate the continuity of transcendence and thus the indestructibility of life. All along the chain of existence, there have been ample demonstrations of the continuity of events, presenting natural changes that testify to existential continuation. However, lamenting its sensation while pressures and are increasing, these aficionados of bitterness uh, the, um, talk about the destruction of the being and disjunction of the physical form. So here, once she, she mentioned about the formation of the physical body, guided by the, the, the Paris spirit, going through the process of decay and coming to death, now she says, now what? What are, you know, this, uh, this uh, big enigma, like philosophical enigma, how, how to say? There are some that says that they're, um, the spirit, the soul, whatever the words they, they want to use, uh, is a thinking energy and that survives the disintegration of the body. But there are others that say, because they are very disenchanted with life, that you know they don't even want to, they're thinking about continuing that kind of existence. And they say that it's the final point. Then Joanna de Angelis brings to us the mediumistic phenomena that even if it didn't have that, that name from the beginning, you know, because the word mediumship and every its derivatives come from, was coined actually by Alan Kardec, but there was this communication, there were phenomena, phenomena, happen, phenomena happening, and we can see that um, in historical uh, facts and even, of course, in the Bible. So um, many people uh, or many 
testimonies that we will have that will pop out in, in you know, all around the planet to different uh, people, uh, they will give this, their testimonials of uh, that life goes on. Even when they come to complain that they miss living on earth enjoying the pleasures of you know that the body can provide to them so this is uh one point that Joanna de Angelis also mentions here any comments or questions yes Damien. Back for the first paragraph, then when you mention when she mentioned about the transformation about the body and molecules and atoms and things like things, she's telling us about the life in this planet or like different words. We have different kind of bodies and concept and agglomerates. You know what I'm asking yeah. you about? Yeah. I understood what, uh, and if not, you, you let me know. Um, of course, we cannot state about what happened in life in other planets because we don't know. But we have uh, in the gospel, according to spiritism, uh, in my father, the chapter in my father houses, there are many mentions. And there they talk about the different levels of uh, inhabit uh, planets, let's call planets, okay, uh, worlds. And, um, and of course, uh, we can even infer from our uh, history here on earth we went to the primitive stages as well and we can see the changes and even the lifespan that people had uh, in certain times yeah we can say oh it's because there were no antibiotics or things like that but the thing is there was um, this you know uh, more rotation in the coming and go of the spirits. So we can only imagine that this process of um, life and death uh, is the same, but the more we evolve, the less it will be um, material as we receive here. I remember, and I mentioned, I think a few times in the past, there was this movie. Now they, they made uh, even uh, um, a, a, a cartoon series uh, in the, the TV as well, but it's not the same thing. It's that the movie that was called uh, Dark Crystal, where uh, there was the, of course, the side of the good and the bad. And there is, uh, uh, and and the the good people were, you know, actually very good. And it was one of them that was really, really good. And when it was time, let's say, to him saying goodbye, uh, his his uh, his his death, in in his physical body, disintegrated in in, in points of light. So it was, it was beautiful to see, okay, now I don't need this body anymore. I have to go and your body just vanishes in the air in points of light. So I imagine that uh, this is something that will happen to us in the future. And uh, in the past, we already know more or less how it was, you know, the law of the strongest as being you know, living in the jungles, etc. How what we is is happening, and um, and even recently, I think uh, the worldwide organ or, uh, organization of health uh, has changed the the classifications of uh, 
you know, when you are a, a, an adult, when at what stage you will, you are going to be called elderly and teenagers. There is a new classification that I saw the other day, but I don't know by heart. So was was this that you wanted to know, Sonia? Yes, in in another point then about like uh, the vital principle or the intelligent vital then because when you start reading these send me for for all these kind of concepts then we have in the spiritual book then like principle Vital principle or thing like this, then I'm confused. Then between she's explained to us this kind of concept or different kind of bodies. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. If this this kind of of uh, groups of molecular, she is telling us about this kind of vital intelligence vital, yeah is this the word then used in the spiritual book i don't know well the uh, uh, basically she's talking about our physical body okay uh the whole chapter yeah. is about our positioning in relation to our physical existence and uh, just complementing what I was saying before, uh, one thing that we, we, we should expect in the, f in the future, the more we improve ourselves spiritually speaking, because as we said at the beginning, the spirit and the advancement, the moral advancement of the spirit is, is, the, the, um, is, is, is going to be accompanied by this spiritual body that it will be in accordance. So far, our spiritual body, because of our bad habits, etc., uh, bad actions, is um, very defective, so to say. So when it's time for its very spirit, the mold to to you know to to mold a new physical body, it will come as is. So the more we advance and rid ourselves of those imperfections, at least we will not see ourselves going to to a process of physical death that can be very painful due to certain illnesses or certain commitments or very sudden all of those things so it will be a natural process let's say i came here to live a hundred years this is the time that i will be um you know uh, be assigned to my course right like when you go to to school or to college it's four a year five years six years that it that's that's it so we will come for this let's say 100 years and say well now i i did what i had to do and i will <laughs> vanish into space and continue on the other side of life i mean it will take a while for us to get there but all of what she wants us to to focus here is about you know this duality uh physical life spirit life well of course i didn't read everything to you yet so it's uh, <laughs> you don't have the whole picture so i'm going to continue a little bit <clears throat> In thinking along such lines, they engage in an unending pursuit of pleasurable compensation while in the body, depleting it in libertinism and the use of mind-altering drugs. Glories and misfortunes on earth are phenomena of life for le learning the sovereign laws in the illuminative process of multiple incarnations. Yes, alterations taking place in the body after childhood and uh, um, early adulthood are frightening. Strong bodies and youthful skin suddenly become 
mask of our horrors due to the deep wrinkles and other inevitable the next generations, causing tears and pain. At other times, the forming infirmities afflict the physical vessel and strange shapes, uh, some of which are aberrant and frightening, change individuals into perplexing specters that inspire pity and horrors. While it is not uncommon for the formities of the human appearance to be extreme, life continues to draw breath, irrespective of the person's wish to die. Life, which emanates from God, takes refuge in the, that cauldron of horror as it clings to the worn out and mis, uh, misshapen body. Nevertheless, <clears throat> a body, even when wrecked with pain, is a blessing of great significance for the illuminative experience. Well, why this is a, this is a strong, right? That she she really wanted to paint the picture clear to us. Again, like you know, she's shaking us, saying, "Pay attention to that. Even as you know, if your body is no longer." what it used to be in your 20s, if there is decay here and there, your mind is still sharp, you, you're still living, you're still that same thinking being. Stop just going and, and in a way, even pro provoking the deterioration of your body with unnecessary or very damaging pleasures of the earth that can prematurely lead you to all these situations. But she says, and uh, this of course is one point that we could be even dis discussing euthanasia, for instance, that regardless of the pain, the difficulties, the, 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 the decay of the physical body, Life is a blessing, extremely important for the spirit. Yes. Hello? Anyone want to comment or say something? I will need to. Yo quisiera que tú supieras inglés. Sorry? En el cuerpo. Uh, I don't know if you're talking to us. I cannot hear you if anyone is hearing. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think it's with us here. Uh, okay, so let me mute. Okay. Um, thank you, Andrea. Weight reasons from past lives have contributed to the required occurrence. Thus, whatever may be the physical manifestation with which the spirit is clothed, it's com it comprises a blessing from God, which one must value in order to purify oneself internally. Bless any and every circumstance in which you find yourself because it is an instrument uh, for your moral elevation. The beauty of a day charges a tax regarding the future, and when used in a wrongful manner, it imposes corresponding changes to the needs for harmony. Use each moment to grow, to engrave love in your thoughts and emotions, to shape a radiant future which is always based on previous experiences. The philosophy of immortality is the one most compatible for providing happiness to human beings, for it transforms them into great sculptures of their own soul. So listen here, she says, stop just thinking about your physical body. I mean, it's, it, 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 it's, um, it's no use doing that. You know, in, in terms of uh, trying to prolong our youth days or um, or just trying to give pleasure to our physical body. Oh, I don't care if, 
if I'm eating too much today and I'm not going to feel good tomorrow, I'm living for the day, you know. So she, she's saying you're so much more than that. And you're not seeing the big picture in what it represents each day, each breath that you take here on earth in terms of your eternal happiness and uh, well-being and the purpose of reincarnation and all of that. And I think it's so beautiful when she's with the same, uh, you know, way that she presents that horror picture to us now she says you can become the greatest sculptures of your own soul and actually we are right uh, but what kind of sculpture I, i'm going to present here any comment or question so true continuous edifying thinking this philosophy constructs the program of ethical and moral understanding for the transitory existence. So she's talking about the immortality. When we start thinking about immortality, then our uh, view will change. Uh, we will understand the consequences of our actions uh, and how they impact the world in terms of energy. I, I may just be crossed with someone that bumped into me in the street and, and not thinking that had, that had any consequence. But just my negative thought, thought at, at that point will expel a negative energy and add to others that are around and compose all this negativity that we have around us. So we have to think about it. Without discouragement, persist in improving your sentiments, offering everyone the chance to ascend to the heights of progress, a trajectory on which all individuals are found, often without realizing it. It, it, it's uh, so important what she says here because life can bring disenchantment to us, can discourage us when we are trying to, you know, to become better and for one reason or another, we, we fail uh, the first, the second, the tenth time we, we, we try to do it. And, um, and not only that, uh, we can add orders that will come and say, oh, you're never going to make it. Or, you know, even when we look around and see so many people not caring about their, you know, immortality, their eternal spirit per se, and it can bring us this kind of discouragement. And that is what she says, persist. Do, your, do what you have to do because everyone will go to the same process. This is for everyone. The time that it will take, it depends on each one of us. If you are and act badly, step back and, and begin again. Do not leave aberrant marks or aberrant marks where you have trod. It is urgent that you imprint with you the longing for plenitude working without ceasing for the good. Whenever you are unable to, ha uh, to help, do not contribute to increasing someone else's ruin or misery. That's an important phrase, okay? If you can do anything good, <laughs> don't add up to the bad that is already happening. You were reborn to grow and develop your inner good. I don't know here if it's good or God. Lying in the folds of the profound being that you are. Get into the health habit of being someone who understands and helps even if no one knows about it. It is not important to know who does the good, but that is done for its effects, build a better world. 
Life, therefore, is an incessant course that never stops, much like the abundant, continuous flow of a brook defying the challenge river bed. Uh, oh, the other one is in there. Okay. <clears throat> so, this part of the message, <clears throat> I think it's very clear once it says, go on, go ahead. You failed, just do it again. You're not able to do anything good, try not to add the badge. Uh, remember that there is an inner good in you, the inner God, you are all God, like, uh, like uh, gods, like uh, Jesus said. And we have to give the opportunity, getting into what, what she says, the health habit of being a person that understands immortality and then understands that what you're doing, even if it's not noticed, it is making a change. And a change that will contribute for a better world. So uh, this is one thing that I always say, we all have this, you know, idea that if you become good, you wanted to become, you know, a known missionary. <clears throat> well, we are all missionaries, maybe a very tiny one, but we are. Everything that we do matters and it's going to contribute in, in, the, in the great things of, uh, um, is a scale of things, you know, we, everything we do makes a difference, a difference. When we read the books by Andrea Lewis, sometimes they, they need to find a place uh, to, um, for their respite to, to gather uh, spirits to help. They will look for homes and say, well, this home is a home in the way that, where there is goodness, where there is faith, where there, there is hope, and they go in those homes. So we are making a difference, even if we do not know about it. Uh, any comments about this part, Sean? Okay. Even his disciples, harbor doubts it is so deep. Okay. Oh, go ahead Sonia <coughs> because the other chapter mentioned about when you are old age never give up about the, the good actions and the good behavior then, but what I mean, seeing about my mom, the mom of my friends, very old people, they is they beginning to to think only about the death. They don't think about the life anymore. I try to 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 send some energy for my mom, for example. Then, no, mom. You are living longer than this, and and then this is a very good lesson for us to to remember when we are going to be old. Then it is always time to think about living or think something good, not to be stuck with thinking about oh my my time pass I, yeah. I cannot do anything anymore it's a very good point that you make uh, Sonia because I, I even remember a joke that is uh there was a <clears throat> a person driving and was speeding and then the the police stopped them uh, stopped the driver and when he comes to the car, he sees that it's a, 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 an elderly lady that was driving and she, and he, he asked for, a, you know, <laughs> her driver's license and registration. And then when she gives to him and he sees that she's 
uh, almost 90 years old, he says, uh, oh my God, you're, you, you, you are <laughs> too old to, 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 to drive and to speed in this way. And she said, this is the very reason that I'm speeding. I have no time to waste. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm not good in telling jokes, but the thing is here, um, I think that the more we approach an age that can be an age that we all say, oh, well, I'm closer. <laughs> I'm closer to, to go to the other realm. This is when we, we should uh, also think about not accommodating. I mean, uh, sometimes we may say, oh, maybe I have five years more to live. And when I think about, you know, my past five years, the amount of things that I, I did and accomplished and, uh, you know, five years is a lot. Two years is a lot. One year is a lot. So we still can achieve and, and leave a legacy. Okay of goodness, um, even if we have a month to live or even less, you know. So I, I, uh, it's, it's, this is the reason why I think is spreading this knowledge in terms of, you know, there is no death, there is only transition to a different, uh, let's oh. say, a different way of, of living, vibration, uh, right? Uh, but uh, there is no death. And uh, on top of that, you, you will have a chance to come back, to return, to, you know, to complete things that were not done in this existence or to learn other things or to, you know. So, yes. Uh, I, I, I had a friend that uh, he, he passed already. He was a spiritist and he lived in Boston. And he was, uh, I think, in his late 70s, 80 perhaps. And he used to take the bus. And he said that uh, <laughs> what he did was when he, he, he took the bus in, in his city, Boston, he would try to sit next to an elderly person as well and would entice a conversation about death. Have you thought about that? And then he would say, you know what? My understanding is that this is not, I mean, he, he could do that because he was old as well. And was like, you know, you meeting also a, a, an old friend, an elderly friend and saying, well, what's changing precious about <laughs> what is in our very you know present future <laughs> and uh, he was he was funny and, uh, but he, he said that sometimes he used to take the, the bus just to do that and just to find people that he would say see uh, you know disenchanted and bring uh, hope and say no you know and he would talk about reincarnation I'm already thinking what I want to be in the next life and uh uh, yeah, all those sort of things so yeah uh, time is precious and um, and the thing is uh, there may be statistically speaking more chance of course for us to die when we are in an old age but uh, young people are, are dying each and every day as well so uh, thank and, you it was a, a good advice for me to help my mom every time when she starts like yeah. talking about the death. It's not the common. Have you, have you thought that you just got like this and her? By young, as so many people died, so we stop thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. Even his disciples. Jesus' disciples harbored doubts regarding his promised resurrection. They were shaken and disappointed. Everything was bleak and the outlook was even worse. That was when he arose in immortality triumphant, just as he was before and more lovely than on past occasions. Thus, it will also happen with you. Similarly, 
your loved ones who went back before you will appear again on a glorious dawn to sustain you in your longing and pain. They are waiting for you contentedly and will never abandon you. So live in the physical world in such a way that you may amass a treasure of inner, inner harmony for all the good you can accomplish. Never let the evil of the wicked unnerve you on your journey of liberation. Remember Jesus, who with each step faced the cynicism and skepticism of those who lived only for the fleeting illusions of matter. Um, so she's giving us here the conclusion. She's giving us here the facts. Okay, we are not seeing the spiritual realm. So is the facts according to her? But that's why during this message, she's saying, look around. There have been testimonials from <clears throat> the beyond all over. And from every degree of uh, spiritual involvement, attesting to the fact that life goes on. So now, uh, why should we fear uh, or tr even try to repel, you know, the inevitable, the inevitable thing that is death and not understanding that this is just a, the physical body that it's going to, to vanish. Not us, not the thinking being, not the immortal spirit, and there will be a continuation. Like, you know, that can be a, a nice thing to put in your graveyard to be continued. <laughs> right? <laughs> like a this mini series on TV now, there is always, you know, <laughs> to be continued. Any comments or questions?